Hello and welcome back to the channel. We've just gotten a brand new episode of the Acolyte titled Night. Following from the previous one, Day, this is possibly my most anticipated episode of the season, given how it left on such a, well, I think big is serving an injustice, humongous cliffhanger that we were left on last episode with this mysterious master, or as the internet has dubbed him, Darth Teeth <laughs> figure, just appearing and uh, supposedly facing down the Jedi. So I'm very interested to see how this episode is going to pick up. If we're going to see any of our beloved Jedi die, uh, I will say there was a rather staggering number of extras in the previous episode, so I doubt, I have no doubt we will see some of them die, but will we see any main characters die? Will we finally find out who Darth Teeth is? My money is on Khmer. But we will see who gets unmasked if they do get unmasked this episode. So, without further ado, I've waffled enough. Let's get into it. There better not be a single hair on Basil's head harmed. That's all I will say. If, if, if Basil dies, I'm done with the Acolyte. And how many of these Jedi are coming out, man? Because not all of them are. I'm pretty sure I just heard saber clashes. Oh, <laughs> they're taking on four at once. This is, it's been ages since we've seen this kind of power demonstrated, man. Oh. Is that a best guy helmet then? This is some of the coolest dueling we've seen in a while. Just ruthless taking on four Jedi at once. Just kebab them. <laughs> Not Yord. Not Yord. Where's Sol, though? Sol is supposedly nowhere to be found. And same with Jackie. Duck! There he is! Oh. Please don't take Sol, man. The music as well is typing up. So, oh, May, sorry. May now has a lightsaber, so... We, I'm kind of curious as to what she's going to do. Oh! Jackie! It's honestly also good to know that Jedi actually are combat trained, like, because we don't really see them fight hand to hand a lot. Could this be the Jedi that she can kill without a weapon? I really don't want it to be Jackie, man. The dueling here is on point, man. Is the helmet, like, blocking? Sol is holding a solid fight here. Jesus. Given that guy took down four Jedi, like, single combat. Go on, so what? He's gone. Again, we've still not had enough expounded, or at least in my opinion, satisfactorily to explain what happened on Rendok enough. <laughs> not Jackie as well. No, 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 no. <sighs> What's he doing this disabling the lightsabers? That's my question, like... Is it a force move or is it a uh, part of his armor? Double. <laughs> Dual saber combat, man. Come on. No, 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 no. I speak a dance. Oh. We're not killing off Jackie as well. Thank God. That imagery as well. Good God, man. That's cool. Coward. You are going to betray me. Oh. The choreography here is absolutely stunning. Oh, I, was, I thought Sol and Jackie were safe. I don't know about... I don't know anymore. He's sensing... She's sensing her sister. Dyad in the force. That's all I'm going to say. Dyad in the force. Oh, she's bringing them with him so that... Okay. I mean, it's it's not a bad move, honestly. Like, the headbutts, man. Genuinely, I have not seen, like, some fight scenes that... Oh! Ooh! Check it! It's Kamir! I knew it! The deception as well. Might call me Sith. Ooh. Oh, that's confirmed. Go! 
Throw on your... Ooh. Oh, wait, it's double-ended, isn't it? <laughs> oh! Oh! Killed Yord, man! Jackie and Yord in one episode. Is he gonna kill. S Surely not Sol as well. The, f the rage! I reckon he might tap into the dark side here, you know. I wouldn't blame him. Something happened on Brandock that we're gonna find out about. It's just adding to this layer of mystery, man. This is what I love about this show, and what's what it's done so well is it's it's given things away, but yet been mysterious at the same time. Maybe May doesn't know what Sol did then, but again, she's she's following this very similar kind of vision that that most most dark siders do when they have their view of the Jedi as being dogmatic and limited. So I'm curious to know if May knows something that Osha doesn't that is the kind of greater mystery surrounding soul or whether or not she's just following the teachings of uh darth teeth or kimir as we now know him as oh genius she's cutting her hair to look more like maze oh, i imagine he's going to probably try and try and get his mask back i'm curious to know what the mask was made of because that would seem to be like blocking lightsabers with it I think once, <clears throat> once May's there, she might. Well, the thing is, will she? Uh, I don't know when she's gonna drop her role. Maybe in trying to covering, covering up um, her master's involvement. I, I don't know how she could do that, but ooh, yeah. force healing. Interesting. So even he, he doesn't know that that's Osha. So that was episode five of the Acolyte Knight. Um, <laughs> I mean, that is possibly one of the best Star Wars TV show episodes I've watched. Um, I I absolutely loved it. I thought the choreography was a really, really, really strong part of this. I think all the fights were done so well. Um, and, I mean, the shock of killing off main characters is something that never quite goes away, no matter what, if you're watching Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. But Star Wars, it's not something you see very often. It's it's very much a rarity. So the fact that they went out of their way to kill two pretty big parts of the story up till this point is kind of mental. Um, and also, Jackie being my favourite doesn't help. Uh, because she's now kaput. Uh, and same with yours, so that is very unfortunate. Um, however, I'm honestly just kind of partly in shock because that was an amazing episode. I mean, I, I, I was surprised it was actually Kamir. I thought I was, I thought it would, uh, would be a red herring, but no, it, it, it was him. Um, and his fighting style as well was fantastic. The using his helmet, and I think he had some guards on his arm as well to like knock off the lightsaber hits. Were, oh, that was so is beyond cool and especially the head butting like i really want to know if there's any properties to the helmet that that do anything to, to my understanding it, i think it might have some kind of perception as in um it can block it can block you sensing someone or reading their thoughts um as he kind of alluded to that when he was speaking and then based on what yeah, well, well, yeah, based on what he said when he was speaking, he was saying, take this off, reveal myself, show you my thoughts. It's like, it's oddly specific. So I think this might be a very similar kind of thing to, um, if any of you watched X-Men First Class, the helm that Magneto uses in the sense that Charles Xavier can't sense his thoughts. I think this kind of helm hides him from the Jedi, which is really, really cool. And honestly, pretty original as it goes. Um, but yeah, a lot of the combat was really cool. His saber in particular, I think, it had a very similar thing, kind of like to Cal Kestis's, where it's unconventional, can split and fight with kind of two parts, which was awesome. Um, but honestly, just the, the shock horror of, of killing off two main characters in an episode is... <clears throat> it's, it's, it's really good. It's, re it's really, really good. Um, 
But in terms of anything else, I mean, there's this, again, it's alluding to this greater mystery surrounding uh, what happened on Brendock. I don't think it's still been satisfactorily explained, and I do think we will get that explanation. I think that may be used to turn Osha to the side of the, the to the dark side um and have her maybe participate in continuing the sith line or either that or they'll just kill her off and also a, a very key thing we don't yet know i don't think he's the master here because if he's looking for an acolyte that would suggest that he's the apprentice looking for someone he can train up to overthrow his master so I think that's another very key point of contention as well. Um, and I think a lot of the negativity I've seen towards the Acolyte that actually revolves to the content itself and rather than just ridiculous comments at the actors um, has been, oh, well, how can this even work if the Sith are involved and they've like, oh, what the Jedi have said that they've not seen the Sith for a millennia. You can never underestimate the arrogance that some Jedi have. I mean, we've seen it before, like, even in... Uh, the Phantom Menace, when we watch The Phantom Menace, we go back, we watch it, we see Qui-Gon go to the council and say, there's someone using a red lightsaber. The Sith haven't been seen in millennia, that's rubbish. Could that same argument not then apply to Darth Teeth and his master and whoever, if, if that's the, one of the only occasions he fights and kills Jedi and they don't ever see him again, can that same argument not apply? Um, and that does just kind of expand on the view of how silly the Jedi can be, because they certainly can be. Um, however, I, I'm very interested to see how they do choose to wrap it up. Uh, and I'm very interested to know who his master is, because that, that, that can have some impact on continuity again i don't think it's really ever expounded on in canon we know that plagueis obviously existed um so my current bet is that it's at his master is plagueis not that i don't th i think his master is plagueis sorry and he won't train plagueis i think he's going to get killed off before the end of it and then they're going to say oh he was just a madman with a red lightsaber who claimed to be a sith because he had a dis disdain for the Jedi. Maybe they'll find some connection between him being trained at one point in the Order and then him going astray or something to that extent. Um, and that will lead them to write it off, go, nah, no, not a Sith, you're just a pretender. Um, and then we'll maybe get a shot of, of the real big bad behind it all. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very, very interested to know where this is going to go. Um, and yeah, that, again, this is probably one of the best episodes of Star Wars TV I've ever watched. Um, and I really, really hope that we get a, little, a couple more fights. We did get a shot of Vanessa Rowe using her lightsaber in some of the promo shots. So maybe we're going to see Vanessa go head to head with this dark side. In which case that is going to be absolutely phenomenal. As Vanessa does indeed possess a light whip that I believe we may be seeing in the Acolyte. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that will be all for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Um, I am currently roasting live as it is rather warm in the south of England, so <laughs> I will be wrapping up now. Um, but yeah, thank you all incredibly, thank you, incredibly? That's a weird way of saying it. Thank you all very, very much for watching. If you did like the video, please be sure to drop, drop a like, subscribe for more, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one.